This is a pretty main question in that uh, you know what this is, it's a straight line uh, and dependent on what k is, if k was say 0, it'd be just y equals x, so you're like, I know what y equals x looks like. As k changes, it just moves up and down. This guy though, um, you, you never have to graph or work with something like this. I know, because I've I've done the high levels. I know that this is an ellipse, but you don't know that. So you're like, oh, I don't even know what's going on, right? So therefore, that's why this question is a bit of a curveball. But one of the unusual things about it is we can still solve it without, without any such knowledge of actually what this looks like. I'll show you what it looks like in a minute. If we are looking for solutions and it's simultaneous equations, then clearly the first step is I should try and combine these in some kind of way and then see what happens, right? So that's my first instinct. Um, I might not be able to get an answer out of this, but I could at least probably get a mark by saying if it has something to do with solutions, I'm gonna to have to attempt to solve this. Now, y is already the subject over here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to substitute it into equation two. So I'll write that. I'll sub one into two, okay? So what that gives me is two uh, x squared is still hanging out the front. Here is what I'm gonna put in place of y. So k plus x squared equals six. <clears throat> All right, now at this point, um, if, if they're really being nice to me, I might even get a mark at this point. Yeah. But what, what is this? What have I just created? x and y are variables, but k is the constant. So therefore, when you look at this, this is an equation uh, with x, and it's a quadratic equation. Do you see that? Everything is, is in squares, right? And I'm, I'm really good at dealing with quadratic equations. I can find how many solutions there are to a quadratic based on, now which piece of knowledge do we use in quadratic um, theory, right? To work out whether a quadratic equation has no solutions or one solution or two, what do I use? I'm gonna use the discriminant. So to use the discriminant, I'll put this somewhere else. The discriminant, um, I have a formula for this, it's b squared minus 4ac, it's the thing underneath the square root. So in order to use this, I need it in, um, in general form, I need the a and the b and the c, and it's not currently in general form, so I'm gonna need to work with this. First thing I'm gonna do is expand it out. Uh, let's see here, k squared. <coughs> oh, excuse me. Okay, now just before I move on, how did I know that expanding would be a good idea? And the answer is, if I, want to, if I want the A and the B and the C separately, I'm trying to head toward this form. Uh, this is general form. And you can see it's written in expanded form, but the X squared's been gathered, the X has been gathered, etc. So let's see how many things we can collect. How many X squared terms are there? Uh, three. There's just, um, yeah, two here and one here, so three X squared. That's a really messy X. Um, here, I can see the X terms in here. 2k, that's how many lots of x there are. Now the other thing I notice is that when it comes to the constants, um, they're all gathered in this spot here and there are no constants over here, so I have to change that. So it looks to me like I've got a k squared, but I'll subtract six from both sides to make the right hand side yeah. zero, okay? In some senses, I'm pretty much, the hardest part of the question is done. Yeah. I've got a, I've got b, I've got c. Um, so I think that was the trickiest part of the question, to know uh, this is what I should do, but we're still not out of the woods yet, so let's, let's actually keep going. I've got my uh, general form. I can find my discriminant out of this, I can find what it is, but I now need to look at the question to say what do I want the discriminant to be? So um, if the discriminant, the discriminant can be one of three things. It can be less than zero, it can be equal to zero, or it can be greater than zero. Do you remember which one's which? Yeah, so that's, that's one solution, when it just touches. This is when the thing underneath the square root is negative, so you get no solutions, or zero. Yeah. And so this is the one we actually want. Yeah. This is the one where you get two solutions. Um, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna go with that. I'm gonna say, what is the discriminant? I want it to be greater than zero, so let's do that. In this case, b squared is 2k, all squared, minus four lots of there's a, and there's C, and that's greater than zero. Now you're starting to realize why this question is three marks, because in solving this, I've created 
another quadratic equation. So it's quite a lot of work, right? But we could do it. So over here, that's going to be 4k squared minus 12 lots of this. So I'm just, I'm just trying to do the algebra here. Uh, okay, now I'm just going to watch out for this double negative. That's the only reason why I didn't do them all in one hit. There's 4k squared here. Take away 12k squared plus 72. Yep. That looks good. Um, collect like terms. So minus 8k squared. At this point, what's your instinct? What should I do at this point? Okay, I want to solve for k. So I'm, I'm, pro I'm quite close to getting there. It's a quadratic, so I probably want to end up factorizing. I'm just going to get that light. Yeah. Oh. Uh -huh. There we go. So um, I've got a common factor there. What's the common factor that makes the most sense? Uh, negative, eight. negative 8. So if I divide through by that, negative 8, that'll become minus 9. And then because it's a negative number, um, my inequality switches direction. And then I can factorize. So this is going to be difference of squares. What do I get? Uh, k minus 3, k plus 3. K minus 3, k plus 3. I want it to be less than 0. Yep. And so now, I imagine what does this look like? You can probably do this bit in your head, but this guy looks like this. Oh, that's really bad scale, but you get the idea. Um, I want it to be less than 0. So that's this part down here that's okay, the rest of it's greater than zero. So therefore my solution is uh, between negative three and three. So um, that is a lot of work. Let's just rewind back to the start. Okay. Um, I would expect, hmm, just thinking to myself. Okay, so one mark is here for your actual solution. I would expect somewhere in here, probably here, to be honest. Um, this is where, number one, I've demonstrated I know what the discriminant is. Number two, I've demonstrated what, I, what to do with the discriminant. And that's, that is a lot of, that's why you earn a whole mark for it. Your last mark I'd say is probably somewhere around here um, in terms of knowing that you need to solve them simultaneously and not just doing that, I think that's quite easy. Like, well then where do I go with that? To know that I, I'm gonna go in a general form um, demonstrates an understanding of how to use the discriminant basically. So that, that's why there's, there's so much, uh, so many marks assigned to this question.